All right, my name's Phil. I like talking about politics. And in this video, I'd like to uh, marvel at all the intrigue in the Sunday papers today about plots and counterplots for the Tory leadership, but discuss why, despite an obvious push to replace Truss, it may not happen as quickly as we're being led to believe. But first, if you'd like to be notified of daily news and politics, please subscribe to the channel and click the bell notification icon. So the Sunday papers are all very exciting today. All of them seem to be talking about plots against trust. There's talk of Graham Brady, chair of the Tory backbench 1922 committee, getting back to his office tomorrow to find about 100 letters clogging up the door, expressing no confidence in Liz Truss. There's a lot of talk of that Sunak Mordaunt ticket, which should command the approval of lots of Tory MPs. In fact, the appointment of Jeremy Hunt as Chancellor has only added luster to this plot idea because he was supposedly one of the people who would have been part of the move anyway. There are those uh, saying that Sunak as Prime Minister, Mordaunt as his Deputy and Foreign Secretary, and Hunt as Chancellor would unite the party. But of course it wouldn't, would it? What about all those still backing Truss? What about those still backing Johnson and wanting him to come back? What about those who think that Sunak would still lose the next election, so why make the party look stupid with a coup? Because it would be a coup, metaphorically speaking, of course. The plan does not involve another leadership contest as such. The Tory MPs want to bring some sanity back to their party, and they realise this is not to be achieved by asking the lunatics with a party membership card who should run the government. They've just tried that. It backfired spectacularly. There's no suggestion either that those same lunatics have reflected on the consequence of their behaviour and would do any better next time. Besides, another protracted leadership contest would really piss the public off. Like, even if it produces a sensible leader this time, which is unlikely, it'll still mean weeks more government paralysis when the government faces major emergencies. Covid's taken off again. The NHS is collapsing. Unite are talking about joint strike action for the potential for a million people on strike at the same time, if I'm reading their statements correctly. The country's going to hell. The public will take a pretty dim view of the Conservatives bringing the government to a halt again to indulge in more internal party squabbles. But it's not even just the factions outside of this proposed sunak Mordaunt axis who might oppose it. They might oppose it themselves. It's all very well talking about Sunak as Prime Minister and Mordaunt as Deputy. What if Mordaunt thinks that she should be the Prime Minister and Sunak should just come back to being Chancellor? Well, the rest of the MPs will go, well, OK, we're OK with that as well. Well, what if Sunak thinks, sod that, I had the most backing amongst MPs and I've already been Chancellor. I want the top job. I want to be the first non-white Prime Minister Britain's ever had. Or I might as well just go back to California to sit on a big pile of money. There are just so many factions within the Conservative Party ranged against each other. Even if a load of them can agree that Truss has to go, they don't necessarily agree about what should replace her. It's easy from the outside to see the problem clearly. They are on for a major hiding at the next election. In an interview this morning, the new Chancellor Jeremy Hunt said the country would judge the government at the election on the preceding 18 months, not the last 18 days. But he's wrong, isn't he? Apart from the fact we'll be reminding people that they've actually been in power for 14 years by then, not 18 months, we know that voters don't have this attitude at all. With a lot of swing voters, once the government's lost them, it's sort of lost them, even if you do recover the situation. There are people right now whose retirement plans have been stuffed by that 18 days. There are others who are now worried about how to keep their home. Those 18 days, which are actually really 24 days and counting, they matter to them and they'll still matter in a couple of years. And that's another thing for some Tory MPs to consider. Right now, there are surely plenty of them who think the next election is lost. Being honest, the only campaigner they had was Boris Johnson. That was it. But he shit the bed with the public. They've got nobody else. Yes, they may think Sunak would govern well in their terms anyway. Maybe even Penny Mordaunt. Who knows? But it's hard to see how they'll think Hunt will be any better a Chancellor as he was Health Secretary or Foreign Secretary. But even if they think that, that their picks would do a better job of governing, they must know that these leaders are not going to connect with the public. Some of them must, surely. For these people, even if they accept that trust needs to go before the next election, she doesn't need to go now. They want to do it tidily. They don't want to mess it up again.
That probably means leaving her in place as a bit of a puppet prime minister for now. Forcing her to rearrange her cabinet to get some brains into it and then taking a back seat. Nothing they can do about PMQ, she's still going to get roasted alive there, but that's her fault for making no effort to learn how not to be shit at politics. But as long as other public interviews are conducted by able ministers, not the bubbleheads, they may bring a bit of stability back. And even if they can't reverse the current polls, at least close the gap. You know, they can then look at replacing trust, I don't know, six months out from the election for a candidate with a clean slate, or at least a much cleaner slate, and hope to restrict Labour to not getting enough of a majority to govern comfortably. Because as I've discussed, Tory MPs wanting to replace trust, they don't want an election. They, they don't want to leave anything to chance. They want a coronation. It's been described as a, like a papal conclave. Just all get together, decide amongst themselves in private who should leave them, then give the 1922 committee the nod and they'll sort it from there. But it only works if the vast majority of Tory MPs can agree on who that Prime Minister should be. If they can't, there's not a lot they can do because ousting trust would mean a leadership contest. They can't risk that. And even if they could get their person in, but not with enough backing, the rebels could just vote against legislation, even budgets, and claim that they're doing so uh, on behalf of the party members who've been excluded from the process. They, they need really almost every Tory MP to be on board with this, otherwise it just doesn't work. And even if they could be certain, if they had another leadership contest, that there'd only be two, what they consider anyway, sensible names going to the members, the very act of a full-blown leadership contest would be a very bad look with the public. Because right now, I don't even know how many Tory MPs even accept that trust needs to go. But even if it is almost all of them, they still have very different ideas about who would be best. You know, the idea that they're all going to agree who would be best in the next week just seems a bit fanciful. You know, and this is the consequence of not having an obvious successor to Johnson. Sunak's already unpopular with the public. Yeah, he's not as unpopular as Truss. And his stock's gone up a little bit now that people have seen Truss and, you know, they can say, oh, actually, Sunak was right there. But he is still unpopular. He still created the conditions for recession. He still raised taxes to the highest level since we were recovering from the Second World War. And how is he going to boost that popularity? Higher taxes and spending cuts is what's coming. With the promise of tax cuts later on? Not sure that's going to do it, if I'm honest. Even Mordaunt, whom the public know almost nothing. Oh, she'd get a honeymoon period, no problem, because the public don't really know anything about her. But if Sunak is her chancellor, that's not like to last. Because and, and without Sunak in at least that role, she won't get enough support amongst MPs for the job. And whoever is Prime Minister next year, they still have to explain to the country why we're in a recession. Oh, global problems, global problems. Yeah, sure, but there's always global problems. Why aren't we protected from the worst of it? What's the point of you if you can't protect us? If people can't afford to eat, keep warm, or even keep a roof over their heads in one of the richest countries in the world, what use is the government? People aren't going to be fobbed off with excuses after 13 or 14 years, are they? they? They have been up till now. I'm not sure I see a quick transition of Prime Minister here. What I would like to know, though, for me, one of the missing pieces of the puzzle, because obviously MPs are talking to each other. I'm completely outside of that process. I don't know what they're really saying. What I'd like to know is why did Truss appoint Hunt as her Chancellor? He campaigned for Sunak. Truss is known to have been quite spiteful in her appointment of ministers. She made it known that ministerial positions were only for those who backed her. In fact, she reportedly told Grant Shapps, oh yeah, I'd have totally had a, uh, a cabinet position for you, but you back sun at you little rascal, so off you go to the back benches. So she's only rewarded her backers, people who publicly backed her, right? Hunt didn't back her, and now he's her chancellor the most powerful member in the government except for her. Although, actually, as Truss's power is much diminished, in reality, Hunt probably is more powerful. Why did she appoint him? I'd like to know that. Is Truss accepting that it's all over and she's actually already playing along for the sake of the party? Has she already had talks with people and said, look, I know I have to go, let's do a tidy transition? Has there already been some sort of agreement there? If so, then of course she will play along for a great deal longer. I mean, let's face it, 
She surely doesn't actually want to be the shortest serving prime minister in UK history. If she cannot live out the rest of this year, she's the shortest serving prime minister in the UK. That is not what anyone wants on their CV. So there'll be a lot of skullduggery going on amongst Conservative MPs this coming week. But if you can't get at least 80% of them to swing behind a replacement, it goes nowhere. But if they shift their focus from replacing trust, if they say, well, we don't need to replace trust just yet. What we need to do is replace the government. They may have more chance. You know, they have a chancellor that they're comfortable with for now. If they accept that the return of austerity definitely means losing the next election, then they have a realistic aim in limiting the scale of the loss. Force trust to replace the worst of the idiots, get some of the vaguely sensible ones back in. Might not be easy to get Sajid Javid back in cabinet, as she's reportedly just said he was shit. <laughs> it's not a great move when you're a weakened prime minister calling for party unity to call one of the more respected MPs in your party shit, is it? But there you go. But despite that act of pettiness, if Truss is willing to play along in return for being allowed to avoid the fate of being shortest serving prime minister ever, then a large coalition of Tory MPs who agree on changes but can't agree on who to change it for can certainly insist on a cabinet reshuffle and for Truss to take a back seat for a while then fall on her sword at an appropriate time next year when she's taken a bit more flack for the shit show to come, get a replacement in uh, as we're exiting recession and maybe not too far ahead of the next election, maybe in a year's time. See if you can close the polls a bit. Call an election for May 2024. Try not to lose too badly. Hope that a Labour government without the numbers to pass major reforms easily is limited in what cleanup of the Tory mess they can organise and try and get back into power at the following election at which point you've got 10 years for blaming Labour for everything. That's about the best I can think of for them. But there we are. Those are my thoughts. Let me know yours in the comments below. I hope you found the video interesting. If you did, please click the like button. If you'd like to support the channel further, the join button for memberships. And until next time, I'll see you later.